two verses tonight. Revelation 14, 6, and 7. Boy, everybody's like, ooh, that's good stuff. Two verses. <laughs> Revelation 14, 6, and 7. John writes, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. Let's pray. We do praise you for that amazing grace that yes. allows us to be able to be in your house tonight and yes. worship you together as believers. And wow. We're just thankful for the love that you have for us. Thankful, Lord, for the Spirit and what it brings to our hearts. And yes. Or no matter how rough the week's been, no matter how bad the day is, no matter what we feel like, Lord, to just be able to stop for a moment and center our thoughts and focus on you, Lord, right. makes everything better. Yes. So I pray, Lord, as we open your word tonight, we also open our hearts and allow you to work in us, realizing, Lord, that every chance we have to be in your house is special tonight. So bless us, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Quickly, not to, to belabor it or not to take up too much time, but I, I want us to, to see where we're at. Uh, we've been in Revelation for some time now. The first three chapters we dealt with uh, uh, the seven churches of Asia, and we talked about how that also coincided with really the history of the church and, and, and how it has been laid out. And then we felt like in chapter 4, the rapture had taken place, and in 4 and 5, we get a picture of heaven and what's going on in heaven after the rapture and at the marriage supper of the Lamb and, and all that's taking place there. And then we kicked off in chapter 6, and we came back down to earth, and we started the tribulation period. As we started that, we first opened up the seven seals. And then as we got to the seventh seal, we began the sounding of the seven trumpets. Before we're finished, there'll be seven more judgments that are poured out that are called vials or bowls of judgment. We hadn't gotten to those yet. So we, we were in the, the seven angels. And if Brock would, Brock, would you back us up couple of times. First to Revelation 12 1. So a little over two chapters ago we got this. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. If you can remember back when we got to this point we talked about how this kind of is a parenthesis. It kind of, we had been kind of going in order. There's been kind of a, a chronology as we had started the tribulation period. And then we get to the beginning of 12, and it's like we step back for a second, and we begin to look at other things. And we looked at, at, at a little history. We looked at how uh, the devil was waiting on, on the birth of Jesus and wanted to destroy Jesus. And we've kind of been in that parenthesis all the way up until Sunday night when we dealt with the 144,000. Again, man adds the verses of the chapters. It's not in the original manuscript, but in one of the ways that man adds to chapters and verses, he adds that little paragraph symbol. And beginning in our text tonight in verse 6, there's a paragraph symbol because really the parentheses started with 12.1 and went to 14.5. And now in 14.6, we're picking back up. Brock, would you go now back to the end of chapter 11 and verse 15? Revelation 11, 15. Right before the parentheses started, this is where we were at. And it's been months ago. But just to remember, the seventh angel sounded. And there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of, of the world are become the kings of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. That was the end. What the last verse? I'm not going to read all of them, but 
15 through 19 was the end. We had the seventh angel sounding. Then we started the parentheses. Now we go back, Brock, if you would, to the text of 14, 6. And we pick back up tonight, and I saw another angel. So we've seen the seven angels. Then we had this little parentheses for whatever purpose God had in putting that there. Not mind the question, it's his word. But now we pick back up. We, we've had the seven angels, and now we're going to get some more angels. And so John says, I saw another angel. And, and for the rest of chapter 14, we're going to see some angels doing some other things. And we're, we're picking back up in the, in the chronology of how things are unfolding in the tribulation in, in Revelation. So we see another angel. It says that he's flying in the midst of heaven. When we see that word heaven in the Bible, it can mean heaven like we think of heaven. It can mean where God is at. It can mean above. It can mean like as, as Paul wrote when he was talking about his uh, uh, trip to heaven, the, the third heaven. But it could also mean the heaven as in when you look up in the sky. Those, those are the heavens. That, that's referred to in the Bible as, as the heaven. So this in the midst of heaven could mean up in heaven, and, and that John sees it there, but, but more likely it could just mean that he sees it in the skies, that he sees it in the heavens around us, because there's a purpose in this angel. This angel is not talking to the folks who are in heaven. He's not talking to the raptured church. He's not talking to the saints in heaven, but he's proclaiming the everlasting gospel and preaching to them that dwell on the earth. So in most likelihood, this is in the skies above us. And I say us, we won't be there, I don't believe, but those that are on earth. And this angel is proclaiming and preaching the gospel message. A couple of things here. Notice it says that it's to them that dwell on earth, every nation and kindred and tongue and people. The message is being proclaimed. Now, say a couple of things. First, Notice the grace of God in all that's going on, and yet he is still giving opportunities for people to hear and obey the gospel. We're about halfway through the tribulation. It is really getting bad. Remember, as we've been going, billions of people are already dead, and billions more will be dying. It's as bad and awful as it can get, and yet still, God in his mercy is allowing the gospel to be preached, to be spread throughout the whole world, in the heavens, but throughout the whole world, and every nation, every kindred, every tongue, every people. Brock, would you mind going to Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14? Jesus, when answering the disciples about When's the end going to be? And what's going to be the sign of your coming? And he goes through wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes, down places, all the things we've already outlined that went hand in hand with the beginning of tribulation in Revelation 6. But we get verse 14, and it's always been a verse that we've heard all our lives. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then the end shall come. And you've heard preachers preach this. The Lord's not coming back till everybody's heard the gospel message. So for all of those places out in the middle of nowhere, in the deepest jungles and, and, and blah, 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 the, the word's got to get there and the gospel's got to get there to give them a chance to get saved before the Lord ever comes again. Well, remember, what, what did Jesus say at the end of this verse? And then shall the what come? The end. Not the rapture, the end. Well, we've had, look, and, and, and again, don't get me wrong. We, we believe hard. We're, we're missionary Baptists. We're, we're Southern Baptists, but we believe in missionary work. We believe in missions. We believe in sending out people to preach to the lost folks of the world. And I'm not saying that that's wrong, so don't get me. But it's not that, hey, we've got to get missionaries out and get all the world preached to or the Lord can't come back. No, the Lord's coming back. He's coming back. 
And once the church is raptured and he's back, there's an angel that's going to be proclaiming the gospel to every kindred, nation, tongue, everything right here in Revelation 14. So don't worry. We don't have to do God's job for it. He's going to handle it. But at the same time, he has called us to go out, preach the gospel, and baptize people in the name of Jesus. So, yes, there is an unction on us to proclaim the gospel, to spread it, to take it to all ends of the earth. But it's not one of these things that God's sitting there waiting with his finger on the button. I wish they'd hurry up and get that last little guy down there in, in, the, in the middle of the African jungle. Because if somebody will finally tell him I get the button and we can end this thing. That's not what's going on. The gospel will get preached. We're doing our best to do missionary work, but I'm quite sure there's still some people that haven't heard the gospel yet. But Revelation 14 tells us the day is coming when there will be an angel who proclaims the gospel all over the world in every <coughs> tongue, every kindred, every nation, every race, everything. And the gospel will still be going out even at this point. So we see the grace of God and we see that this is going to take place. Now again, Revelation leads you to get into speculation. There's all kinds of people. What's this angel going to be? Is this a real angel? Or is this something John saw? You know, I, I heard this again several years ago. RCA, you know, the, the, the record label people, you know, Elvis's record label, RCA. That RCA sent out eight satellites that was going to enable them to be able to, to communicate all over the world simultaneously when all the, the satellite stuff was going. And the first one they sent out, they called Little Angel. And back then when that happened, people started saying, ooh, this is it. Right then, they called it Little Angel. This is the angel that's going to spread the gospel. They're going to do it via satellite, just like they sent out Elvis via satellite. Well, the problem was if you do a little research on Little Angel, once they turned it loose and, and, and set it out there, they never heard from it again. It never, it never did anything, and now they can't find it. So it wasn't Revelation chapter 14. But the idea, again, that that gospel will still be being preached, and everybody will hear it in their own tongue, their own language, and their own understanding. Now, how many people will obey it? Hey, if you won't obey it now, it's easy. What makes you think you're going to obey it then? But, but don't forget this. At this point, imagine what people will have seen. Because again, everything will be broadcast. Everything now is at your fingertips. The bloodshed all the things that have happened from the seven seals, all the things that have happened from the seven trumpets, the billions of people dead, four billion at this point, dead and gone. The horror and the terror, and it's only getting worse. I believe you will have some people that finally do cleave to and hear the gospel message and say, I tell you what, this, this, this is our only hope and our only chance. Thank God he's still merciful enough to be giving people opportunity. But notice what it says there in verse 7. Sorry, Brock, would you go back to the text now to verse 7? Say it with a loud voice. So this is, see, he's preaching the gospel, but here's some specific things he's saying. Fear God and give glory to him. Pretty simple, isn't it? Hey, the gospel message is that Jesus Christ died for your sins and you can be saved by placing your faith in him not in this antichrist has been telling you he's the savior of the world. Not taking his mark. Not falling down and worshiping him. But worshiping the one true God, Jehovah, and his son, Jesus Christ. But here's some specifics. Fear God and give glory to him. And I want to stop there for just a second. I think one of the biggest problems we have, period, today is that people don't fear God. People don't fear God. There's no fear there. Sin is not looked at as sin is supposed to be looked at. Holiness is not looked at as holiness is supposed to be looked at. I'll go back to, to Sunday morning in Luke. Scripture's not preached anymore. 
10 ways to be a better husband, five ways to have a bigger checkbook, 15 ways to raise your kids better. That sort of stuff has taken over instead of sola scriptura, messages based on God's word that deal with hell and reality and the only way to be saved is through Jesus Christ. That doesn't get preached. They leave hell off. They leave getting saved off. They leave sin off. They leave faith off. And we we filled churches, unfortunately, with a lot of good motivational speakers. Yep. And you feel good when you leave. But there's a lot getting left out. Right. And a fear of God is not there. We as a country don't fear God. Yeah. Case in point, yesterday. Yesterday is a clear-cut example that we as a nation don't fear God like we should. Wow. You can't tell me that people in their right minds who fear God would vote for unlimited abortion at any point in time, yeah. socialist values, transgender, choose it by if you want to be a boy or a girl, all the crazy stuff out there that more than half the country is voting for. That's where we're at as a people. And it goes back to, we don't fear God anymore. There's no healthy fear of God. I would be scared to death to know that I had to answer to God yeah. if I stood up here and told y'all that all that stuff is okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just like I mentioned, the church is battling right now. Well, should we stay in the in the conference or not? Because they're allowing gay and lesbian preachers and that. Do, how's that a question? Right. How can it be a question? How can we, as a, as a people, say, yeah, tell you what, we'll be able to kill babies anytime we want to. All the way up to whenever. Hey, you know, that's a, that's a woman's right. No, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. But it goes back to no fear in God anymore. Again, I don't plan on being here at this time. But I would think maybe by this time there will be some fear beginning to come in people's hearts. Fear God. Almighty Jehovah God. And then notice what he says. And give glory to. Because we all know God's all about his glory. I've, I've preached this, I've harped on it long enough, but guess what? You're here now, you get to hear it again. Uh, Brock, would you go to, to Romans 1 for me? Can't talk about this without going to Romans 1. And go to, let's go to 8, 18, Romans 1, 18. <coughs> for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness in unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power in Godhead, so that they are without excuse. And then verse 21. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was dark. Yeah. Folks, that's our country today. Yeah. Right. That is where we have found ourselves. If, if, you, if you don't, I won't, I won't read all of it, but probably we skip to 25 and we'll get you to come back to 21. We skip to Romans 125. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. That's where we're at. There's no fear of God. There's no worship of the creator. It's all about the creature. It's all about man and woman. It's all about what we want. It's all about how we feel. It's all about us and not about him. But as Paul so plainly put, now 
Rob, would you go back to 21 for me? When they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. The two biggest things, what God wants, he wants his glory, and he wants to be thankful. This angel, flying through the heavens, will proclaim the gospel and say, fear God and give him glory. God gets no glory in today's world. God is mocked. But remember what the word says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Revelations is man finally reaping what he's been sowing. They glorified him not as God. And then just to stop here for a second, hey, we had Thanksgiving. Here. Hey, Chris, you get it on Thanksgiving right here. We're thankful. What? I could have. I'm not going to. But I'm going to challenge you this. The Lord just owned me about this today. I'm preaching to the choir now. We're a thankful group of people. We're thankful. We say it in our prayers. We do it with our actions. We're thankful. I want to challenge you over the next little bit, though, to really look for some things that you're thankful for that you don't really realize. I want, I want you to search. Hey, the big stuff's great. You know, we, we all got personal things in our life. So big things God has done. Maybe it's the health of our kids or our grandkids. Maybe it's uh, something he delivered us from. Our, our person, me and my personal life, you know what? What he did for us through the tornado and then changed our whole life for the better. A few years ago, now, he was about her cancer. She's sitting there, beautiful as ever, great, everything's good. That's, that's, that's easy thing. That's easy thing. But, but little things, things that we take for granted, to stop and really think about what God has done in your life that you take for granted and don't really thank Him for. You gotta think a little bit, but when you start thinking, and you start really considering just how God, how good God is to all of us, and just the little things that we take for granted, it'll really make you start to look at Him in a different way and be more thankful than you've ever been. Hey, now I'm not saying stop being thankful for the big things, because the poor we are. But I challenge you tonight, start looking at some of the little things. Some of the things that we should be thankful for, we just kind of overlook and take for granted. <laughs> boy, God's been good to every one of us. Yeah. He's going to keep being good to us. Because he's never forsaken one of his own. And if what we believe the word says, the fact that we won't be here during all this, we, we need to be thankful for. Yeah. The fact that we've been born, when we've been born, where we've been born, and how we've been born, we need to be thankful for. The family that brought us up. Preach, you don't know my family. Hey, we all got crazy. We, everyone else got crazy family. We all know that. But boy, how good God was to bring us up with who he brought us up with, wow. when he brought us up, yeah. where he brought us up. Yeah. Again, hey, I drove in tonight for the 52 Wednesday nights in the year, 25 years, or however many that Wednesday nights is. And I take that for granted. It's Wednesday night, I'm going to church this year. I should be thankful. I'm getting to go to church at Shannon Baptist Church with you folks. I still. I told my guys today, so yeah, this y'all don't understand. We, we, I got a really good group of kids, really good group of kids this year in basketball. We ain't gonna be very good. We ain't gonna win a lot, but just the best kids that play so hard. All, they do everything you can ask, and it makes going to practice fun. It makes seeing them in the hallway fun. It makes everything enjoyable. I'm like, guys, y'all need to y'all need to soak that in because you ain't gonna always have that. Hey. Folks has been going to Shannon for years and years and years. Y'all don't, don't know what it's like. 
to dread walking into church. Right. Or to dread walking into church so much you don't go. Right. Because the place is awful, or people's awful, or, or whatever. We get in our little comfort. Wow, let's, 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 let's have it. Yeah. Hey, God's been good to us. Yeah. This is a great place. Yeah. He's a great God. Mm -hmm. Be thankful. And give Him the glory for us. Oh, preacher, I go here because I live here and I've been going here. That's my choice. There's some other churches in Shannon you could be at, and I ain't down to raise nobody, but I won't be here tonight, amen. Yeah. I won't be right here. This is where I want to be. Thank you. Yeah. Brock, would you back to the text, verse 7? I'm sorry I made you jump so much. <clears throat> Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him. For the hour of His judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountain of waters. I like how the angel is taking the people here that are still on earth all the way back to the beginning. Worship the creator as Paul said instead of the creature. Y'all worship the creature long enough. Now it's time to worship the Creator, to give him the credit. Because hey, once once the rapture takes place, do you really think there's going to be anybody here left on earth that believes God created the heaven and the earth? No. Every theory of, of evolution and, and Big Bang and, and whatever you can come up with, that will be all that's left. But notice what this angel's telling the people left on earth. Worship the one who created it all, who made heaven and made earth and made the sea and made the fountain of water. It's time for y'all to go back and call on the one true creator, almighty God that y'all been ignoring and saying didn't even exist for all these years. Here is the gospel. Here is God. I'm thankful that it's still going to be being preached. I'm also thankful that I don't think I'm going to be here while it's being preached. Right. But it will be getting close to when we're all coming back on our horses. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let's stand. Wild and East, lead us in a merciful way. I love Jesus. Open the altar up tonight. If you'd like to come pray, we'd love to pray with you tonight while we, while we sing a verse. There is a
Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day that you've given to us and this chance to be back in your house, Lord. And we thank you for this place and we thank you for uh, this group of believers that you've put us with and knowing, uh, Lord, through your word that nothing is done by accident, Lord, but that you willed in all things. And we thank you for your grace and uh, where you've put us and the time that you've put us and who you've put us with. And, and Lord, we just thank you for uh, all that you've done and so many things that we just don't even begin to comprehend that you do behind the scenes and uh, that, that you have ordered for us, Lord. And we thank you for your word and we thank you for the message tonight and the chance to sing your praises. And we pray you go with us now as we leave your house that we be busy about your business in these last days. And we pray all this in your son Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Amen.